I want us to unpack Jeremiah's lament. Now, Jeremiah is a Hebrew boy. He's a, he's a Jewish boy. He was called to be the prophet of God. He was sanctified and set apart from his mother's womb. God told Jeremiah that he was calling him to go to the nations. He said, whatever I say, you say. Whatever I tell you to do, you do. And Jeremiah was doing just that. He was called to the, the southern tribe, which was a tribe of Judah, because the nation of Israel were split at this time. So he was doing the prophetic work of God in the land. But the people of God didn't want to hear it. They wanted to live as they, they wanted to do them. Do whatever they want to do. Life is free for me. God will forgive me later. And Jeremiah was calling them on the carpet on that. That God is going to judge them for doing, because there's a God sanctified people and you're living like the world. And so they didn't like what Jeremiah had to say. And so they began to persecute him. He was beaten. He was thrown into holes. He was put into um, chains and in stocks. Jeremiah was being persecuted for doing what God asked him to do. And because of this, he pens this lament in Jeremiah chapter 12. Truth be told, we've gone through that with the Lord. You heard my story where you're feeling like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And God seems to be silent. You're, you're doing what God asked you to do. And and you don't know where God is after you've committed to him and doing what he's led you to do. And, and all these persecutions are coming against you. And you're wondering, where is God? Why is he absent? I want us to unpack Jeremiah's lament. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? In other words, why do messed up people live so good? Why do wicked people seem so blessed? Why are we stressed out in our finances and they get to live the good life? They're rude, they're mean, and they get all the good stuff. They get the job promotion and they're having fun time on the job and I'm working hard and I'm not getting the promotion. They're outside Sunday mornings washing their nice cars and I'm trying to get a ride to go to church. They ain't even thinking about church. And I'm hoping my hoopty will get me to church. Jeremiah was upset with God and he was going at it. And that's just verse one. He says, you have planted them. Yes, they have taken root. They grow. Yes, they bear fruit. God, they're doing well because of you. You say you allow the sun to shine on the just as well as the unjust. You could stop it at any time, but you keep allowing them to be blessed. You're near in their mouth, but far from their mind. They talk about God, but God is far from them. They got the lingo, but not the action. They got the church talk, but not the church walk. I'm trying to live right and honor you, and I don't see anything coming through me. For me, why am I struggling, and I'm trying to do the things that you've called me to do? Then the prophet Jeremiah did an unusual request. He said, pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. Prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn and herbs of every field wither because of the wickedness of those who dwell there? Jeremiah is saying that the earth is suffering. The land is suffering because of these wicked people. And then God responds to Jeremiah, Jesus. God responds, if you have run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with horses? Wait, what? I, I never said I wanted to contend with horses, God. Like, I'm okay with the footmen. Like, that's an even playing field, like humans against humans. I'm not trying to contend with an animal, a whole animal at that. Right? Like a, like a, like a true, like straight up, strong animal. Like, they use the word horsepower for a reason. God knew exactly what he was doing. You see, back in these days, when nation battle against another nation, they will send foot soldiers first. Foot soldiers weren't strong. They weren't the strongest. They weren't the tallest. They weren't the biggest. They were just a lot of them. And so what the, what the armies would do was send them in first and it would wear out the opponent, make them tired, make them dreary. And God was saying that the stuff that you're going through, the things that you want to run, you want to run from college, you want to run from the call, you want to run from doing what God has called you. He's saying those are foot soldier issues. Oh, 
those are small issues, Jeremiah. The stuff that I have for you is surpassing these foot soldier issues. Are you going to allow a foot soldier, a footman to come into your life and rob you of the call and the destiny that God has for you? Really, Jeremiah? And so God is going to Jeremiah because he's trying to help him understand that he's called him to contend with horses. Now, I want, I want to exp describe to you two things you need to know. Foot soldiers, they are, hmm, how do I say this? They are what gets you prepared for the horses. They prepare you. It's like the wings that's being developed, right? But before they prepare you for it, they want you to know, God was trying to help Jeremiah understand that foot soldiers reveal that you are going in the right direction. When you see the enemy attacks against you, issue after issue, problem after problem, challenge after challenge, it means that the devil is trying to wear you out. But why? Because he doesn't want you going in the direction that you're going in. So he wants to distract you. He wants to discourage you. He wants to bring depression and despair upon you so you can walk away from what God has called you to. You know, the things that you face, the foot soldier things that you face, you know, like they're talking about you. Foot soldiers. They didn't say hi to you. Foot soldiers. They praised someone else for the work you did. Foot soldiers. You're being misunderstood. Foot soldiers. They lied on you. Foot soldiers. They ignored you. Foot soldiers. You have insufficient funds. Foot soldiers. They have more followers on Instagram than you. Foot soldiers. The person you thought was the one became somebody else's one. Foot soldiers. And then you're going to let those things rob you of the call and the destiny that's on your life? Absolutely not. And so you've got to recognize, SEU, the foot soldiers that comes into your life to try to steal what God had. You know the enemy has a threefold ministry, right? Steal, kill, and destroy. But God has come. Jesus has come into your life so that you might have life and have life more abundantly so when the foot soldiers come into your life you got to be able to look at it and recognize it for what it is and say i'll bind you in the name of the jesus i'm gonna operate in my call i'm gonna operate in my destiny you will not rob me from the calling that god has oh. let me tell you what foot soldiers do because it's a lot of them they come to bind you with fear Fear paralyzes you. It keeps you from operating, from moving. You know when that fear comes, you can feel it up across your neck. You can feel it in your stomach. That's because the enemy is trying to stop you from what God has for you. But God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. So when that fear comes up on the inside of you, you gotta remind the enemy of that scripture. My God has not given me the spirit of fear. He has given me love, power, and a sound mind. But the next thing that foot soldiers bring that lets you know, it lets you know that the horses are coming. The horses are coming. Well, what does the horses mean? Ooh, oh my. The horses, they're stronger than footmen. They're not like humans. They're faster. They endure long distance. They run in the heat and the cold. They will run into any battle without fear. On your own, you cannot contend with a horse. You do not have what it takes to contend. So then why would God call me to contend with horses if I cannot contend with a horse? Because it is God's desire to give you what you don't have to do what he's called you to do. Because he don't want you operating in your own power, in your own flesh, to bring about kingdom business. You're going to need his kingdom power on the inside of you. You're going to need his glory on the inside of you. You're going to need his spirit on the inside of you. Because if you do it on your own, then when you step into a thing, you're going to think, my hands have done this. My power has done this. And you're going to steal the glory from God. But he's saying, I'm going to get you in a situation where you're going to need me. You're going to need to depend on me. Because this thing that I'm calling to, you are on a qualify. You're not qualified for. But it is God who qualifies. It's not you. It's not your good looks. 
It's not your charisma. It's not your degrees. It's not your Hebrew knowledge. No, 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 no. It's the power of God in earthen vessels. Can somebody... Foot so the, the, the horses that comes in our lives. It comes to paralyze us. It comes to disrupt what God has in store for us. But God is saying, I'm giving you power to do what you cannot do on your own. And that is contend with the horses. You know, I would rather contend with a cat. Give me a gerber. Give me a hamster. I'll even take a dog. I'm taller than them. But then I can still take the credit. And God wants us in situations where our weaknesses, our weaknesses made perfect in God's strength. I'm not supposed to be here. I was a botched abortion that didn't go through. I'm not supposed to be here. The statistics for me says that I should be on the streets. When they called me to be the business administrator of CLC, I was in my 20s. Inexperienced. As a matter of fact, I turned down the position because I felt unqualified. I told Pastor Max, you need to go pray about that because I, I'm not the girl. I, I don't have what it takes. I just got out of prison. And all I have is basic college math. What you need to run a multi-million dollar church and do all the stuff that it does, you need someone that went to school for this kind of stuff. They got, they got the degrees for this kind of stuff. Pastor Max went and prayed and came back and said, God showed me the person. I said, who? He said, that person is you, Nadine. He said, but he said, figure out what God. And walked out of that office. I was unqualified. I didn't have what it takes. But God saw fit to use this ex-prisoner that didn't have nothing going for her life. And gave her a platform in that church. Not knowing I knew little used to be up at two o'clock in the morning asking God, please, I don't get it. These tax stuff, I don't get. And God gave me what I did not have to do what he called me to do. Are you in over your head right now? That's exactly where you need to be. Because what's over your head is under his feet. Since you are seated on the inside of him, everything that's under his feet is under your feet. It's not your power. It's not your glory. It's because you're in Christ Jesus. So when you're in Christ, when the enemy sees you, all he sees is the glory of God on you. So you can say to the enemy, God has called me.